tonight's message doubles as a a transformation conference a pastor's conference there are so many things you're going to be learning tonight and i pray that god give us a heart that understands hallelujah so i titled my discourse tonight in a teaching called this is the message this is the message first john 1 and verse 5 that's where i coined out the title for tonight it says this then is the message which we have heard of him and declared unto you this is the message and it says we heard it of him and then we have now declared it unto you this is the message we have heard of him and declare it unto you hallelujah now for introduction i want you to take note of this that what makes men powerful in this kingdom as leaders especially in the ministry one of the foundational reasons for the greatness of men in this kingdom is the message that is given to them listen carefully the value of a man of god the value of a ministry the value of any spiritual platform among many others is measured in the kind and the quality of the message that has been given to them and how intentional they are in dispensing that message in this kingdom what gives power to men is the message above and beyond the person hallelujah praise the name of the Lord I wrote down here and I want you to listen and then write every attack every spiritual attack on a man of God on a ministry or on any vision is ultimately an attempt to silence the message every spiritual attack on a man of God on a ministry or on a vision is ultimately intended to silence the message this is what Satan is about when Satan attacks people he does not just attack them for themselves he attacks them so that he brings them to a point where their message is not heard watch this now the attack of Satan with respect to ministries or men of God is twofold number one the first attack is on the character of the individual why is the character very important because the character is what gives credence and believability to your message are we together before people believe what you are saying they want to believe in you so when the devil attacks your character look up please when the devil attacks your character what he ultimately seeks to do is to bring you to a point where you are not of credence before the people and therefore whatever comes out of you they do not pay attention to it so the first attack of satan is usually the character of the man of god and when he goes that route the second route is the quality of the message these two things the character of the man of god and the message but ultimately the attempt is to silence the message let's look at two scriptures to buttress on that point very quickly acts chapter 4 and verse 15. this was after the man at gate beautiful had been healed we're reading to 18 very quickly then we'll go to verse 5. it says but when they had commanded when peter now was called into the council they had commanded them to go aside out of the council they conferred among themselves uh-huh saying what shall we do to this man for indeed a notable miracle had been done by them is manifest to all them that dwell in jerusalem and we cannot deny it 17 watch this now but that it spread no further among the people let us straightly threaten them that they speak henceforth no more to no man in this name so the problem was their speaking there was something about their message and the power and the transformation it was producing verse 18 and they called them and commanded them not to speak at all or teach in the name of Jesus that was the warning 
That was all Satan was about. Now let's go to chapter 5 and begin our reading from verse 27. 5 and 27. 5 and 27, not 19, 27. Yes, 5, 27. And when they had brought them, one more time they appear before the Jerusalem council and set them before the council. The high priest asked them, 28, saying, did we not straightly command you that you should not teach in this name? And behold, ye have filled Jerusalem with your doctrine. Other versions will say with your message and intend to bring this man's blood upon our heads. The message is powerful because among many things that the message does is to give the people a new orientation. It structures their understanding to begin to see God and to see life from a more superior standpoint. And these guys were threatened by the message. Someone say the message. Now, let me, let me just share with you something very powerful before I go to the meat of our discussion. I wrote down here and... If you are in ministry here, particularly the fivefold ministry, I want you to please pay attention. This is a two or five minutes powerful crash course as far as excelling in ministry is concerned. Listen very carefully. Every ministry I wrote down here, every calling and every commission from God that must find expression must have these five essentials so that every ministry every calling and every commission that is from God and seeks to find expression must have these five essentials if God has called you or you claim God has called you if these five essentials are not at work in your life and your commission I guarantee you your ministry and your vision will never find the light of day. This is not only true for ministry, it is true for any kind of organization. Are we together? Let me run through the list. Ready? Number one, every ministry, every calling, and every commission must have, number one, the message or the mandate. This is the first essential for any ministry to succeed. You must understand your mandate or your message you can preach many messages you can preach many series but it is important that you understand the message that which is a holistic capture that represents your contribution as far as the mandate of God to you is concerned the message in Matthew chapter 4 and verse 17, we see this classically revealed in the life of Jesus himself. From that time, the Bible says, Jesus began to preach and to say, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. There was no confusion. There was no ambiguity as to the message of Jesus. You could distinguish the ministry of Jesus as against that of John, as against that of any other prophet. There was clarity and exactitude to his message. John chapter 10 and verse 10, still making reference to Jesus to buttress this point. Jesus was speaking and he said, The thief cometh not but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. He said, But I am come that they may have life and that they may have it more abundantly. Are we together? In Matthew chapter 10, I believe from verse 7, he was commissioning the apostles, the disciples now, and he made, before he started talking about signs and wonders, he said, as ye go, preach, saying. There was an exact content to the message. He didn't say, as ye go, well, just say whatever you want to say. As ye go preach, saying, the kingdom of heaven is at hand, meaning within your reach. And then verse 8, demonstrates the validity of that kingdom by healing the sick, cleansing the lepers, raising the dead, casting out devils, giving freely. But the message is in verse 7, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. So every ministry that must find expression every organization must have their mandate and their message clearly spelled please look up now i teach especially in ministers conferences when i charge ministers especially on this point i tell them that 
God has called different ministers to do several things. It is the mandate and the assignment of every man of God to insist that the subject matter that relates to the area of call and mandate becomes one of the truths that are most surely believed among the people. Is that true? Let me give you an instance. If you go to Canaan land to our father in the gospel, Bishop Oedipo, there are many things that you hear people know, but a typical dedicated covenant winner when you speak to them as touching the matters of faith they live they breathe faith because in one word the theme of that commission is faith are we together yes respectfully speaking if you go to say mountain of fire and miracle ministries you know you step the, from the gate you will start praying <laughs> hallelujah it doesn't matter whether you are saved or not you can be saved later on as you go but from that place because the the energy of the mandate will force you into the vision is someone learning already it's important that every vision that must thrive especially to a global scale the people who are connected within that vision must understand what they represent great organizations across the world both in the christendom and the secular they have all kinds of creeds that indoctrinate the workforce helping them to understand these as a basic modus operandi of the company if you meet someone who works say in mcdonald's and you ask them certain things about the, it will be an embarrassment to the company that they just say me i'm selling here i don't even know what we are here for it's important you understand your message Many believers and many organizations are not able to thrive because there is confusion and haziness as far as understanding the message is concerned. Number two, very quickly for time. The second essential that every calling, every ministry must have is the strategy for execution. I call it the pattern. It's not enough to have the message. You must have a st the strategy for execution. In the kingdom, we call it the pattern. It's not enough to have a message. You must have a pattern. Back to Matthew chapter 10, and I'll begin my reading from verse 5. Lend me your attention. Please be patient as we read. Watch this. Jesus is commissioning the 12 now. The Bible says, then... These 12 Jesus sent forth and commanded them saying, watch, watch this now. He didn't just give them the great commission. He's revealing to them a pattern and a strategy. Go not the way of the Gentiles and into any of the Samaritans enter ye not. I have a six. It says, but rather go to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And as ye go, preach, saying, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Verse 8. Heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, cast out devils. Freely you have received, freely give. Verse 9. It says, provide neither gold, nor silver, nor brass in your purses. Uh -huh. Nor script for your journey, neither two coats, neither shoes, nor yet staffs. For the workman is worthy of his meat. Notice what he's giving them now. Now, watch this. He says, verse 11, please. And into whatsoever city or town you enter, don't just start shouting and preaching. It says, inquire who is who in it is worthy, and there abide till ye go tens. 12. Reading to 16. And when ye come into a house, salute it, it says. And if the house be worthy, let your peace come upon it. But if it be not worthy, let your peace return to you. And, what, and whosoever shall not receive you, nor hear your words, when ye depart off, out of that house or city, shake off the dust of your feet. Verily I say unto you, it shall be more tolerable for the land of Sodom and Gomorrah in the day of judgment than for that city. The last verse, it says, Behold, I send you forth as sheep in the midst of wolves. Be ye therefore wise as serpents and harmless as doves. Everybody says strategy. So you would see the disciples behaving in a certain way. Very strange and an unfamiliar path, but they were walking the pattern that they were given. Listen, just because you have a correct mandate does not mean you will succeed. It is important that you understand the pattern. Hallelujah. 
two people can have the same mandate exactly the same the difference will be in the pattern that God has given them are we together very very important number three the third essential are you learning already the third essential that any ministry must have is the platform so number one the mandate number two the pattern number three the platform you must have a structure that allows you to do what you are doing that structure can be your throne if you are Joseph or Esther it doesn't have to be a church or a ministry that structure can be your business anything that puts you to that elevated position where you are able to carry out your mandate with ease is called your platform for most people, they think a platform is just going to register the name of a ministry or the name of an organization. No, no, no. The platform represents any structure, physical or otherwise, that is able to put you in a position where your voice can be heard. Influence is very powerful. Without a platform, you will not be able to communicate the counsel of God, no matter how sincere you are. Koinonia now, this ministry, for instance, is a platform that has given us the influence, the credence, the visibility to be able to communicate the counsel of God freely. This is powerful. There are several thousands across the globe right now connecting across the social media space there are several others that will be following by way of rebroadcast there are several thousands others right here on site you can imagine because of the power of a platform hallelujah number four what is the fourth essential you need for any vision to experience the light of day you need resources you need resources and resources are twofold first and most important human resources and then material or financial resources please write this we're learning you need resources in Romans chapter 10 when you read from verse 14 and 15 Paul is teaching us now how then shall they call upon him in whom they have not believed how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? Notice the progression. The lesson now is in verse 15. And how shall they preach except they be sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace and bring glad tidings of good things. So it is important to have a preacher and it's important that that preacher be sent. You need resources. There are many great visions that are limited today because of the bankruptcy of human and financial resources. Remember Haggai chapter 1 and verse 8? Haggai chapter 1 and verse 8. Very prophetic scripture. Go up the mountain, he says, and bring wood and build the house and I will take pleasure in it and I will be glorified. Go up the mountain. Resources are very important. I have met men of God. I have met several people, including entrepreneurs who say, Apostle, listen, only God knows what is burning and boiling in my spirit as far as destiny actualization is concerned, but I am incapacitated. If you do not have men, you will usually not have resources. And if you have resources without men, you will be frustrated because there are many things money cannot do. Hallelujah. When God wants to honor a man, he gives you access to men. Then he will help you with resources. There are many people who will run away from men and chase money. It's a very big mistake. Hallelujah. The money is in the pockets of men. So if you chase the money without the men, you will be a thief. You will still find yourself looking for men, but in a wrong way. Hallelujah. But resources are very important. I submit to you by the integrity of God's word. There are many books today that deserve to be written across the globe. Many people will tell you, I had an encounter with Jesus and God has placed something in my heart. But because of the bankruptcy of human and financial resources, they are not able to go far. There are many, many ministries. One of the blessings that God has given us is the ease of access to resources. And this is what has made it 
it's made it easy to be able to communicate the gospel in truth with power and integrity imagine how saddening it would be for a pastor that whilst you're standing you are preaching you are thinking right now you see there was a phase in our lives and in ministry where we experienced the other side of preaching when you are owing and having all kinds of things and it's not good it can kill revelation it's not only demons just the worry of knowing that you, as soon as this service is over diesel transportation and then you can imagine a ministry this size imagine what the logistics that goes in imagine some of the ministries of our fathers across the globe it takes a lot you need resources men and then and then financial resources so you have to learn how to make those resources available to you God's way with integrity playing crooks and pranks and naughty and dirty manipulations in a bid to have access to men or in a bid to have access to resources will eventually backfire it's a matter of time can I tell you people do not have time wasting money on a foolish person people are not idiots they vet you and they make sure that you are worthy of their investment nobody will give you one naira and one dollar if you are not serious it is not money that makes a vision money only amplifies a vision your seriousness your commitment your dedication your servant heart your integrity people look at this and let me tell you when people find you brought by god but supported by your truthfulness there is no limit to what people can do to support you take this from me your support is only as easy as your seriousness if you are not serious forget about support hallelujah just asking people to give you money because you feel you don't have money is almost fraud if not fraud there has to be a justification are we together i'm not talking about money but it's amazing how people just carelessly make a demand and believe that the whole nations should just give them money bless them for what people have to ensure number one you are serious with god two that you are a serious person first but if and when they do find you worthy of their investments, I repeat, there is no limit. Let me tell you the truth. Givers have not finished on earth. Oh. It's just that people are not visionary enough to make their giving worth the while. So for a preacher here who is saying, Apostle, I've tried. This money thing is not coming. Among the many ways it comes is to be serious with both God and yourself. And you are going to be serious for a long time and give the people an opportunity to watch, to vet, and even test your integrity. Is someone learning? The same person who will not give you 100,000 can give another person 1 billion naira. It's not about being greedy. It's that they've not found you to be serious enough. I want to hold a small program, maybe a small worship concert. Our budget is 100,000 and the man will not give you. He will keep asking you questions. When were you born again? Who was there when you were born again? Who followed you up? You know, and you are saying, is this what you are doing to me? And yet for someone else, they will come and sign a check, 500 million, 100 million, 10 million, and say, this is our own honor. And by God's grace, it will not be the last time. And sometimes they will do it and you will be aware. Some of this blind claiming of realms that you have not gotten to by growth is only a mockery of your spiritual life. Settle with God, stay with God. John Wesley said, set yourself on fire and the nations will come to watch you born. That is true. Hallelujah. Are we together? My beloved is the most beautiful among thousands and thousands my beloved is the most beautiful among thousands and thousands yes you
Sing it one more time. Yes, you. So essential number one for every call and every mandate is that you must have and understand and know how to effectively communicate the message given to you. Number two, you must understand your pattern. The pattern always controls the glory. The pattern always controls the glory. The Lord told Moses in the book of Leviticus, he says, this is what the Lord command that ye should do, and the glory shall appear unto you. So the pattern or the strategy for execution. Number three is the platform. You need to build a platform. Number four is resources. Number five, the backing. The fifth essential, the backing. In this case now, the anointing and the spiritual empowerment that support your call. Now you have told people you were called by God. When they come, it's time to prove it. No stories, no excuses. You said Jesus heals. They said we are here. You said carry all your sorrow and come. God sent me. They say here we are. You have no idea of the kind of sorrow I came to church with. So you should not be angry and give flimsy excuses because you told them God sent you. And in as much as you are a student learning and we continue and remain students, there is a minimum level of efficiency that if you have not attained, do not call people. You will only be calling people to embarrass yourself. Are we together? Yes. The backing. Matthew 10 and verse 1. Matthew 10 and verse 1. Jesus when he had called unto him the 12 disciples, the Bible says he gave them power. Someone say power. What did he give them? He did not just give them a message. He gave them power. So if you receive the message, don't start running. Wait till the power to prove the message comes to. It is dangerous to run with the message alone. The message without power will make you look like a liar because there are forces that have been sent by hell to make sure the message on your lips sounds like a lie. The assignment of power is to insist that what you are saying is true. Listen carefully now. This is a ministry of power. You know that already. So, I mean, is you breathe the air of power and the supernatural. It's a mandate. That God should not, listen to me, listen to me. Don't blame people if they don't take, pay attention to you. Let me tell you, more than the message or in addition to the message, you must obtain empowerment by the Spirit. Micah 3 and verse 8. Micah chapter 3 and verse 8. It says, but truly I am full of power by the Spirit of the Lord. I'm not just full of a message. I am full of power. Power to heal. Power to deliver. Power to restore. Power to rewrite the negative narratives over people's lives. The backing. Acts chapter 1 and verse 8. Having mentored them for a period of three and a half years, he's about to release them officially. And he left them with this message. But ye shall receive power. That means you can reject power because he didn't say you shall have. He said you shall receive. After that, the Holy Ghost is come upon you and ye shall be witnesses unto me. It takes power more than a message or in addition to a message to be a witness. In Acts chapter 4 and verse 33, it's a popular scripture in this house. And with great power gave the apostles witness of the resurrection of the Lord Jesus and great grace was upon them all. Someone shout power. power. This may be the missing link for someone 
Maybe I'm speaking prophetically to a man of God. Maybe I'm speaking prophetically to a leader. There is nothing wrong with your call. You have stayed well to obtain the strategy. Can I tell you sincerely, integrity of character is important, but it is not enough to get the job done. You need to understand your message and my goodness. You need power, especially in today's world. You are a man of God. You are hearing me. God may be revealing to you that this is the missing link. It's not like your call is not genuine you have not stayed and held on to the four horns of the altar until he said tarry in Jerusalem don't rush without power it's a risk oh, oh, oh power has come oh, 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 oh your power has come Oh, power has come. Oh, power. Hear me. In the school of power, there is no ignorance of his arrival. Mm -mm. It's impossible for power to come and you do not know. When power came from Elijah to Elisha, he turned immediately and said, where is the Lord God? Listen, there are things that take time to manifest. Power is not one of them. As power arrives, it starts speaking immediately. I can tell you this. Power has come. Oh, 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 oh. I, 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 I. Ebenezer. Ebenezer. Listen, we can spend a vigil this night as I tell you several sessions of impartations of genuine power from heaven. I, I can tell you stories upon stories. I can tell you graces and how they came and when they came. Your destiny must know what grace has arrived. You can't keep acting powerless and wondering why increase is not coming. Is that right from the days of John? And up until now, the kingdom suffered violence. It takes more than eloquence, more than oratory. You need power, power against, power above, power that compels compliance. Hear me? It takes power to see. It takes power to hear. And then it takes power to speak. It takes power to compel people to leave their homes and their nations to come and hear you. You must be joking. Just to believe. It, it takes more than value, my dear people. No. For people to ignore tribal sentiments, ignore all kinds of interracial sentiments, and stay to place a demand on the grace upon your life. It takes power. I know you are a prophet, but the missing link is power. I know there is an apostolic call evolving, but the missing link is power. I know you are a CEO. I do not doubt your wisdom, but there is power. Your speaking is like a lecture. There is no power. Listen, hear me. When I say power, I don't just mean falling down and shouting. Power is the capacity to bring evidence to your speakings. The ability to bring solutions. Power. The Bible says where the carcasses are. Is that in your Bible? It says there the eagles will gather. The world has not yet invented technology to ignore power. No. The world has not gone to that level where they see power and, 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 and throw it away. No, sir. The day God uses you to do something spectacular in the life of your family members, by themselves, they will say, God called you. 
Listen, our fathers who have joined the cloud of witnesses today, when you read the stories of men like Apostle Babalola, they didn't just come to say, I am called. You are joking. You don't bring cards and say, take, invite me. No, your power is your card. Genuine, authentic, apostolic power. Not manipulations and games. Look at the testimony of the gentleman who came here. I came in and I heard very touching testimony. A matured adult having that kind of thing. Never downplay the extent of problems that people have. Let me tell you, when you become a solution by power, you have caught the attention of a generation. Not assumed power, not power with a lot of noise. And then when it is now time for performance, this is what we largely do, respectfully speaking, in the body of Christ. There is a lot of noise of what we claim we can do. But in light of real results, everybody just chickens away. No. Power. Genuine apostolic power. Jesus mentored them, but it was not enough to release them. And on the day of Pentecost, when that power fell upon them, Peter stood up and said, this is that. Prophet Joel spoke about it. This is that. Let me stretch my hands over someone. In the name of Jesus, let something from heaven come upon you. Let something from heaven come upon you. I separate you from a natural life. I separate you from a, power, a powerless life. In the name of Jesus. Hear me. You are a man of God here. Receive power. Power from heaven. Not just power in ministry, power in business. Any dimension of result takes power. Apostle, why are people not coming to my store? What do you think brings them? What do you think brought the animals to the ark of Noah? A suggestion? An announcement? Before we get into the, the doctrinal pillars, this, this is just our pastor conference version. No? After that, we'll continue the message. Please pray in the spirit in one minute. Lord, power upon my life. Shabekatos ketebakatos. Genuine power upon my life. Someone pray. Genuine power. The fire of the Holy Ghost. Outside, pray. All the overflows, pray. Power upon my life. Ministry with results. Genuine results. Business with results. Genuine results. Leadership with results. Genuine results. The capacity to provide solutions beyond the realm of intellect. hallelujah 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 now before we continue i want to pray a very special prayer there is a group of people here i see that god this thing that we call the hearing ear and the seeing eyes the lord is asking me in under this atmosphere to impart that grace i stretch my hands some of you your dreams are dead your visions are dead I stretch my hands right now, wherever you are, all over this auditorium, all the overflows, men and women alike, at the count of three, I stretch my hands. Let a miracle happen to your eyes, your hearing and your seeing. One, two, three, receive that grace now. Receive that grace now. Receive that grace now. I revive visions in your life. I revive supernatural encounters in your life. Hallelujah. Please be seated. Please be seated. Please be seated. 
So these are the five essentials. Five essentials. Five essentials. Help two people that will start running now. I just saw this in a vision. Let there be an ignition upon your spirit man. Let there be an ignition upon your spirit man in the name of Jesus Christ. Let me do a one minute recap again. For any call, for any mandate and any commission from God to find expression, essential number one, you must understand the message and the mandate. A capture and a representation of your contribution. Number two, You must understand the strategy given to you by God for execution, your pattern. Number three, you must trust God for grace to build a platform, a structure that gives you visibility for the sake of expression. Number four, you must trust God to understand the dynamics that is responsible for accessing resources, human and material resources. And number five, you must stay until something from heaven lands on your life. The backing from heaven. Moses said, if your presence will not go with us, hear me, if your presence will not go with us, don't say I'm a preacher, you are entering a land where witchcraft has been there for a long time and the only thing you came to give them is just stories. You are joking. See, with all due respect, there are many missionaries that traveled to regions they just carried Bibles and carried malaria drugs without power. As soon as they got there, some of them did not even wake up the next day because we are dealing with spirits. It takes more than welfare to transform people. We are talking of people who have been hijacked and kept as slaves under the bondage of Satan. And you know in the body of Christ there is a lot of gyration. We talk so much. You will the, the amount of power that sometimes those I desire the power of the Holy Spirit sincerely. That's what drove me to Reinhard Bonkers Crusade. Even after my encounter with God, I said, Lord, that evangelistic power that grants a man grace to come to Africa from Germany and sweep across Africa that grace when it landed I said that's right let me submit to you hear me with all due respect if I speak at this level and by the grace of God I don't think I'm speaking in pride we don't have everything but there are some things we have let me counsel my generation please obtain grace from God to go back to the secret place our noise without power is too much. We are only going to embarrass ourselves. This is not how we started. I believe that there is a generation that is rising. They are not yet known. There are people hiding in the secret place and building capacity. Men who will be like gods. Men who will not talk about power. They will demonstrate the reality of the power of the Holy Spirit. You will see healings like never before. You will see resurrections like never before. Power that will win a whole nation in one day. Let your power fall in this place. Let your beauty we ask for signs and wonders. Let your power flow. Yes, it never 
tired in one minute lay your hands on your head and say lord i'm available as as you are empowering men with this end time mantle father do not pass me by do not pass me by how can i run an apostolic ministry without genuine empowerment from heaven a prophetic ministry without genuine empowerment a joseph ministry of economic influence and leadership without empowerment how can i rise as an esther without empowerment hallelujah 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 so hear me please you see what makes a chef a chef is not just the ingredients is the combination you can be given the same ingredient that a chef uses and you will cook something that you are not even but that that guy has mastered the art of combining it and it takes training and it takes time i counsel again my precious dear generation let us manage premature manifestations we are saying and doing many things that are clearly bigger than our level of grace we need to obtain grace and stay and come out again with power refreshed power to demonstrate the validity of the kingdom are we together when God started with us there were certain things we knew that they were beyond the limit of the power available at that time the Bible says to minister according to the measure of grace you want to speak over people's lives and shift spiritual climate can I tell you you know when some of you here are pilots and there's what they call flight hours to determine whether a pilot before he becomes um before he becomes what's what's the highest position now a captain you don't become a captain just because you graduated from flight school no you must have flight hours in fact for others they have to travel to other nations and fly using their weather and have certain levels of experience before you now move to become a captain when they say someone is a captain and you are flying a plane, when he sees certain things, whether a, 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 a change in atmospheric conditions, he's already used to it. He knows what to do with that plane. The passengers are safe because they know he's there. It is a risk for certain people to fly to certain altitudes or under certain kinds of climatic conditions. It takes more than preaching to truly be a blessing. You are going to have to obtain grace from God. I have prayed and I continue to pray that God will keep heaping coals upon coals of fire upon my life. As far as I'm concerned, I have not gone close to where God I, I desire. I know what God has shown me. Sometimes I catch myself rebuking myself and say, Joshua Selman, you are too slow. Keep moving. There are heights. Dimensions in the spirit. You want power with God? You must master the art and the dynamics of prayer. You must master the art and listen, let me tell you. If you do not know how to stretch your spirit man, forget about power. For as long as the vessel was small, the oil looked like the vessel. You must enlarge capacity in the spirit. I have taught you here that authority and power in the kingdom are in levels. The least level of authority is authority over things. Then you graduate with God and he grants you authority over nations and regions the highest level of spiritual authority is authority over God's program he, he his blue his prophetic blueprint he puts you in charge of it by grace things nations his program 
Are we together? Listen to me. If this is all we do tonight, I want to challenge somebody. Hear me. This can't be it. God is so much bigger than this. Hear me, apostle and prophet. No, this is what, not, not what the generation has been praying for. This thing we are bringing now that we are bragging is not yet it. Thank God for where we have gotten to. But I submit to you, this is not the mantle that will bring that revival. This generation will need more. Need more. Greater signs. Dimensions of wonder by the Spirit. He's calling us deeper. Deeper. This is a prophetic message for someone God is saying you left off the training I started with you by now we would have gone far in the school of the spirit but when God started as soon as you started getting invitations you graduated yourself from the school of the spirit and now you can see several things you should have learned you have not learned several dynamics in the spirit you should have known no. you see in the secular you can jump classes and read up and write an exam but in the school of the spirit any class you miss even if it's after 10 years you must come back for that lecture again just because you started seeing and you started hearing did not give you the credence to start prophesying the prophetic realm is a delicate and a complicated realm that takes mastery to be able to handle the speakings of the spirit Hallelujah, thine the glory. Hallelujah, amen. Hallelujah, thine the glory. Revive us again. Hallelujah, thine the glory. Hallelujah, amen. Hallelujah, thine the glory. I've shared with you here, sit down please, please sit down. I've shared with you my vision of many years when God was showing me the mandate of this ministry. I remember in that vision, I stood in a room elevated and suddenly I had run in there because I was afraid. It looked like some people were threatening me or something of that sort. And I suddenly saw an endless sea of people an endless it was a whole generation and I was wondering and then the vision started zooming the people close to me and those in front started crying and they were beckoning on me and I said what is wrong and these were their words they said no food and no water I was so touched I said why who is the cause and they pointed their hands at me I said me why would I do such kind of evil against you and I made up my mind I said I'm coming to rescue you but I was afraid and then I made up my mind I said I will go if I perish I perish as soon as I opened that door there was a giant gray bearded man who was waiting for me and he picked my little hand and said I will walk with you and he said let's go now I know it's the Holy Spirit you see listen all you see is not all there is there is a throne that backs men that produces this extraordinary dimensions of result did you verify your backing before you started you only verified your message did you verify your backing did you verify did you verify that every time you prophesy there is an anointing to make it happen or do you just believe it will happen because it happens for others no 
it is what God told you that you would defend in the open hallelujah I remember in one of those visions I was in a dark place it was like a community just like a, maybe a curfew and there were people seated sick people dejected weak people and I was passing among them I said I was crying I said what kind of disaster is this and I heard a voice from the spirit and he says to heal them all every one of those encounters came with anointings I've shared with you my encounter in Reinhard Bonke's crusade traveled down to Joss when he came for his crusade I stood the first day for a long time he had preached I was a man of God but I had to shelve that thing you don't receive from a man of God as a man of God this is the problem with our arrogant generation we are desperate for graces at our own terms hallelujah I remember by the second day I had prayed and prepared I said Lord that which you have put upon this man simple teachings nothing no extraordinary revelation anywhere but tremendous power I said Lord what have you granted this man I remember six hours standing upon that field from 3 p.m. till 9 p.m. and I stood there as a man of God I made up my mind that I was not just going to stand I wanted to serve I saw them wheeling people from wheelchairs take it and I said please let me join they said I'm not part of the committee I said what committee I came here with hunger I must walk let me serve God and serve that grace I remember pushing some of the people to the front and I said Lord this is how it will be in my meetings also and without all contradiction the lesser is blessed of the greater listen I stood there you've heard my story I stood there close to a pregnant woman sometimes the woman will be tired and lean on me and you know and you know in the crusades you don't sit down you stand I was almost saying madam please we all came here to receive too this one that small time you'll be but I was determined most people are not hungry enough to receive there is a hunger level where there are no more excuses Listen, Reinhard Bonke had finished preaching. Very simple message. Can't even remember what he preached. And then he was going to take a cup of water to now minister the baptism. And something happened. <laughs> My eyes were open. And I saw the first manifestation of the Holy Ghost. I saw a giant bird. This is what I saw. Having like silvery bands. It was not, it was soaring, not flying hovering around the entire auditorium i thought everybody was seeing it but i was the only one who was seeing it and i saw just moving round moving round and the holy spirit took me to genesis chapter 1 from verse 2 and 4 and the spirit hovered round the face of the waters and that was when god told me the union between the spoken word and the movement of the spirit is what produces the miraculous it came by revelation listen by the time I was back to myself, I had turned and backed the stage. I did not even know when I turned. I knew that something had landed. Are we together? When I had the honor of going to pray in Daddy Geo's prayer room, I've told you as a man of God, when I was there, I was not asking for nonsense. It's a stupid thing to be asking for things at that point. As I locked myself there, I said, God, you gave gifts to men. Men rise by the impartation of God through men. What did you place upon this man that granted him grace across the nations? Lord, this is what I am praying for. And Jabez cried unto God. There is a way you get angry with your current level. I'm sharing this. We are products of many graces. I remember when God gave me an instruction to carry a seed and rise and go to Canaan land. I remember that I went there when I when I got there after I did what I would do I came out and the Holy Ghost told me to place my hand on the ground the ground there Canaan land I placed it on the ground there and he said from this day you have entered the overflow anointing one night I went to preach for a particular ministry and then I saw them I saw us entering MFM prayer city I said thank you Jesus the, for me, they were going to keep me in the guest house because where I was going to preach for was close to MFM there. 
and so they kept me at the prayer city i said thank you jesus when i had finished and all the convoy and protocol went i woke up later in the night and i went quietly there and said lord you gave gifts to men whatever is needed in this place to be added for this assignment let it land hallelujah let me tell you a story that i've not said here in a long time in fact i've never even said it i traveled to a particular nation many years ago and then they happened to keep me in a room where then now prince charles had been, had been kept in that place too and the king of zulu had been kept in that place too and when they kept me there i woke up in the night and i was praying i said lord influence has a grace there, there are graces that enthrone men as kings the bible says that we have been made unto our god kings and priests now that i've had the privilege to come here i this is not about physical royalty that i use it as a point of contact is there any grace you see we don't always say the things that we do but let me tell you make no mistakes about it results are controlled by mysteries are we together yes one of the last anointings surprisingly to land upon this ministry is the grace for wealth and abundance you will be surprised we started well and sincerely but that grace was not there struggling after every crusade in debt and, and, and you know you, you can imagine how embarrassing that is so when I talk to you about resources I'm not talking stupidly I know what I'm saying I've told you where you are preaching on a crusade ground shouting Jesus is Lord and the people you are owing also are on the crusade ground too waiting for the crusade to finish and let them say where's our money and I had to say there, there must be a way out like this if you continue ministry that way you will stand at the corridors of compromise listen I will quickly share with you some things and when I do one of the things I'm going to do tonight is to just pray that some graces will rest upon your destiny this night in the name of Jesus Christ I told you our possibilities are controlled by the graces that we carry I remember one night when I was watching the video of William Branham I was watching his video on my laptop quietly seated in a room and I was looking at the man and hearing him talk such a such a, a dispense of humility and I was saying look at people mocking this man you know because at the end of his life he brought some teachings that people were not comfortable with and they just carried the baby and the bad water and everybody even those who are not one tenth his dimension criticizing him and as I stood there and I was watching that video something happened to me it was like a cold sensation just landed on my head and started going down my body over a period of 30 minutes or so I remember I think the next meeting I was going to have was in Kaduna or so and I got into that meeting and it was like a joke I started delving deeper into dimensions of the prophetic that surprised me what grace have you ignored because of ignorance in 2007 I had a vision and in that vision I saw God's servant Bishop Oedeko and I was going to sow into his life and I was going to sow into his life and then when I sowed into his life he said there's still some more and I brought out some of the money and I sowed and I remember he took me to a room in that vision as soon as we opened the door I saw the room and there were several currencies there and I was asked to pick and I said what is this surprisingly there was no lust or attachment you know how you say ah uh, what, what they call it now that you just jump and start to, mm -mm. I just picked a few of them and that was it and when I came out I had the audible voice of God and that opened me up 
to a new dimension listen brothers and sisters i'm saying this to you so that you will ask tonight what is yet to land on my head that is making my life this way there has to be something left as for the spirit of revelation that one came directly from jesus that when he appeared to me i've been blessed by several people across the body right from when we started you know graces books that i read ew kenyon kenneth hagin and all these great men but in that encounter that light that left jesus and entered into me it was like a straight line from genesis to revelation hear me your prophetic will remain like a lie until grace really comes on you some of you are called into the ministry of kingdom financing but your hand is empty because the only thing you are thinking about is business in this realm of financial dominion it takes more than business believe me there is there is a there is there is a a relationship with the holy ghost my beloved is the most beautiful among thousands and thousands my beloved is the most beautiful among thousands and thousands Yeshua hear me there are many of you here the missing link is the grace for influence God has anointed you but you cannot reach those he has sent you to because Esther once you are in Shushan you cannot reach the king Joseph once you are in prison you cannot reach Herod Daniel once you are down you cannot be able to save Babylon there are mantles and ministries that require you to rise to a level of visibility where those you are sent to can hear you hear me there are some of you there are levels of resources you need to have access to because the people God is sending you to, you will need resources as a leverage to compel their hearing. That realm is the realm beyond buying and selling. Hmm. These are realms where you transact realities from the realm of the spirit in addition to whatever value it is that you provide. Please hear me. Tonight's teaching is very prophetic. The next 10, 20 minutes that we're getting into, I'd like you to be sensitive to the things that I'll be sharing because I'm going to be speaking prophetically. And I sense in my spirit that whilst you listen to me, for many of you it will be as it were, I think in Acts chapter 10 now and verse 44 or so, that while Peter yet spake these things, the Holy Ghost fell on them which heard his word i believe that for some of you right now there are destiny activations as i will be teaching right now hear me there are there are many things it is it is from the bowels of your spirit deep is calling on to deep Play the violin for me.
come and make your presence known, reveal the glory of the reason. Spirit of the Sovereign Lord, come and make your presence known, reveal the glory of the reason. Let the weight of your glory cover us. Let the light of your river flow. Let the truth of your kingdom that is within us. Let the weight of your The weight of your glory. The weight of your glory. The weight of your glory. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Now please hear me. For those who are following online, you may need to call your loved ones or call a man of God or a prophet to tell him connect now. The next 10, 20 minutes, there are very strange destiny impartations that will be happening to people and happening to ministries there are some of you who are following right now. You may need to call your husband, your wife, and say, leave what you are doing. Come and settle down. I'm not even saying here. People who are following. Some of you are following by way of television. Some of you are following. It's time for the mandate to speak. Please sit down. Please sit down. Hmm. I want to list for you the seven doctrinal pillars that make up this vision. There are seven doctrinal pillars that make up this vision you call koinonia. This is the jurisdiction of the mandate that have been given by God. I may not have all the time to just teach on them. I just want to list them and we'll pray. No eye has seen, no ear has heard. Someone in the media, I just saw the power of God. And I submit to your work in me till Christ be formed in me. No eye has seen, no ear has heard what God has prepared for me. Submit to your work in me till the Christ be formed in me, till your glory be formed in me, till your power rests on me. So I submit to your work in me till Christ be formed in me. Pillar number one. Please write if you can. If you're with the Holy Ghost, that's fine. You came to church. This is what this is about. The seven doctrinal pillars that make up this vision.